Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving deep into the world of finances to uncover the fascinating story behind one of the biggest telecommunication giants in the world, Verizon Communications. So let's jump right in. To understand how investors perceive Verizon's profitability, we look at the price-to-earnings ratio. Currently, Verizon's PRTTM stands at 6.29, while PRFWD is slightly higher at 6.89. These indices suggest that the market values Verizon's earnings quite favorably, since in the last five years Verizon has had a PR of around 10.70 on average. Now, let's talk about the PG ratio, which indicates the relationship between the PR and the company's expected growth rate. Unfortunately, we couldn't find PG data because the projected EPS next five years is negative, as we will see later. Two essential profitability metrics are ROE and ROA. Verizon boasts a solid return of equity of 24.2%, indicating efficient use of shareholders' funds. The return of assets stands at 5.7%, reflecting Verizon's ability to generate profits from its assets. Now, let's talk about earnings per share, or EPS. Verizon's EPS currently stands at 5.13, which is a crucial indicator of the company's profitability. Looking ahead, Verizon's EPS next five years shows a challenging trend with a negative growth rate of minus 0.73%. Investors should keep a close eye on this metric as it may impact the stock's performance. For income investors, dividends are crucial. Verizon boasts an impressive dividend yield of 8.09%, providing a steady income stream. Additionally, its 2.39% dividend growth over the past 10 years, CAGR is a promising sign of stable returns for shareholders. Apparently, it's a bad performance for dividend growth. However, Verizon will be dividend aristocrat in 2030, making it a very attractive option in the telecommunications sector. Moving on to margins, Verizon demonstrates robust financial management. The operating margin sits comfortably at 23.5%, while the profit margin is at 15.8%, indicating the company's ability to convert revenue into profits effectively. Now, let's take a look at the evolution of Verizon's profits and income in the last five years. The verdict? Neutral. It suggests that the company's financial performance has remained relatively stable during this period with a consistent revenue and income. Investors are often concerned about stock performance. Over the last 52 weeks, Verizon has experienced a minus 32.50% average price return. Keep in mind that market fluctuations can impact a company's stock value. And finally, let's talk about the size of the company. Verizon Communications boasts a staggering market capitalization of $135.66 billion, cementing its position as a major player in the telecommunications industry. There you have it, folks. The financial tale of Verizon Communications, full of twists and turns. Remember, investing in stocks involves risks, and it's essential to conduct thorough research before making any decisions. If you found this video helpful and insightful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more engaging content. Thanks for joining us today on this financial adventure. Until next time.